This episode of 321 Lay On Podcast is brought to you by LARPBox, a monthly subscription box for LARPers by LARPers. Go to LARPBox.com and use the promo code 321PODCAST to receive 10% off your next purchase. Welcome to 321 Lay On Podcast, Next Level Nerds podcast about live action role play. We're here to learn as much about LARPing as we can and any other related topics that we can find interesting. If you enjoy, subscribe, give us a like, a review. That helps us out a ton. If you really like it, we have a Facebook page you can check out and a Patreon slash... Fuck. And a Patreon page, patreon.com slash nerd, where you can support us if uh, you want to go the extra mile. Joining me today are Evan and Joseph... Hey, there you go. You're just gonna have to move in. Touch faces with your brother. Yeah. <laughs> just like you were in the one before you were boom. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we are heading into the LARP season, so we're gonna start ramping stuff into the show again. Uh, get some. Other LARPs on the show, see what they're up to, other projects in the LARP field that are going on. And uh, kind of looking, we talked a little bit about our LARP future last episode. Um, so we have a party going on for our Frontier Dawn LARP, and uh, Evan is excited. <laughs> yeah, I'm always excited. To LARP. <laughs> but it's a uh, kind of role play event, which isn't, you know, they're more buffer magic combat uh role playing quests and stuff but this is strictly role play no combat um and so i didn't i haven't attended these yet because they're just a one day event and it's a long drive for us but uh anyway they're doing another event like that um but it seems like there's a little special event for the event going on possibly yeah apparently the location we're having the party has a little stage <laughs> so uh, some of the musicians decided to put on a little concert. And initially I wasn't planning on going either, but this sounded exciting. So I got involved with that. And so I'm going to be singing a couple of numbers and playing percussion throughout the concert. And I believe Joe is going to be accompanying and singing too. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. No, he has to. <laughs> it's been recorded. Yeah. You're going to be in character too? Uh, Just a hooded figure in the back. From the bowels of darkness. <laughs> um, no, I am, I am playing a character. It's not a really technically significant character at this point. Um, but I will be reprising the role of my bard character. Don't you have a couple? Uh, He's important to me. <laughs> uh, no, I only have one that's a bard. Oh, I thought there was a Wada frog guy that also... Oh, true. But you're talking about the more recent guy. Yeah. Skull. Yeah, Skull. Cool. There you go. So if you're in the eastern Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Delaware area, that's a good uh, event to maybe, uh, you know, dip your toe, meet some people. Um, You won't have to worry about the rules as much, you know. Just yeah, kind of get a feel for people's nine. characters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you never know. I guess that's always on the table. <laughs> <laughs> what are you trying to say about Frontier Dawn? <laughs> I'm just saying it doesn't, uh, there ha- doesn't have to be combat involved for someone to die. <laughs> From the poison you just drank. <laughs> so. so that's cool. It's a fun thing i think for larps to do those kind of things um you know i've heard mixed opinions on it some people don't want to have to kind of sometimes it's like a whole different theme to it you know so you kind of almost need another kit you know like a fancy kit or uh you know fancy coat um but yeah it seems frontier dawn you know they always go the extra mile with doing special videos i think at the last one um, just dropping a lot of lore and fun things like a concert at this one. So, yeah, this will kind of be a carryover from the end of last 
event and the uh the nations all coming together and celebrating victory together and then looking to the future and war (laughs) (laughs) calm before the storm yeah yeah so we've been partying for three months and we're gonna pick it back up just about (laughs) yeah i was curious i didn't know exactly where we were going to be in game like are we still in the mountains or do we head back to port harmony that i'm not too sure about I think we're going back to Port Harmony. I'm not really <laughs> I'm taking a little bit of step back. <laughs> um, Put more time into podcasting. <laughs> we lured you away. Um, no, yeah. I mean, that's maybe a topic for another podcast about dealing with the stress of LARP and running a game <laughs> and how it can get to you. But uh Sure. Yeah, I mean, I'd, it's less that and more just trying to do other things in my life. Yeah, you know, LARP takes a running a LARP takes a huge commitment, even if you're not like the owner per se, which I can't even imagine right. the stress of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I often wonder if that's ever in my future, kind of coming up with and starting a LARP, but. <laughs> I haven't shaken his head. But it's more, uh, I'd wanted to keep it small, you know, so it in my head wouldn't be as stressful. I'm sure it still would be, but I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, I think I've always, like, if I ever created a LARP, I'd want it to be, like, facilitating a story that the players kind of progress themselves. So, like, to build a world to the point where you don't really have to like all you need to do is provide the setting and the lore and then the players come in and they embody those things and take it where they want to. And so it's like sure. they, they make their own stories, they carry their own things and you kind of like as a staff like would put like some input into it to to kind of like you know change some things and make it more interesting or whatever, but like it really comes down to almost like when we talked about Dragon Thrones where the players and their societies and king kingdoms or whatever are kind of like deciding how to re- interact with one another while like this thing is happening in the world. Right. You think that takes like a good staff that can think on their feet and ad lib and improv situations, or you're saying you want it so prepared that kind of just follows that they do this so this would probably happen or whatever i mean i think i think you need a good staff no matter what (laughs) but um doesn't hurt yeah (laughs) with that specific skill i meant um you can suck at everything else i mean if you as long as i think you had a staff that was like well aware of like the parameters you were operating in then the parameters were set and players are kind of like allowed to kind of like exist and explore as they want to then it really really all that falls on to you is reacting to it in such a way that you'd be like basically like yes or no and this is what happens um yeah in a logical sense like you kind of what i'm imagining is that you create like a logical framework that's like this is you know what happens when you do xyz and right yeah, but I mean, I think, but you don't, but you wouldn't create like you would like create it to the point where it's like, you know, these people are at war or such and such thing is happening, and then like these players are playing for this house and this player is playing for another rival house or kingdom mm. or whatever, and so when they meet together, those players decide like the level of interaction between each other, and that sort of like sets the stage, and all you kind of do is like insert like. Maybe not like major like plot, but like something that would kind of stir both. That's like an outside kind of thing. Sure, yeah. I had a question, but I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. It, it, it's kind of... You'd still like have some work that you'd have to do, but... Right. I remember what I was saying. <laughs> 
Yeah, I think uh, I've met people who kind of tabletop that way. You know, like we played with a guy who was a dungeon master and he kind of, I can't remember if we used the setting. Yeah, I think we used the setting, but he knew it so well and had been playing it for so long that he kind of just, you know, made the rolls, like the dice rolls of where we ended up. And in some ways it felt to me like a little lazy, like <laughs> he didn't come up with something for us to do, like specifically. <laughs> uh, but he would just like let us go wherever. And that just wasn't really what I was used to, you know, it was kind of a little bit on rails as far as what's going to happen that day when we sit down to play. Uh, and so he like let me wander off into this, like these ruins that had, we were like level two and these things were like level 15 <laughs> inside that were attacking us. He had to say something like, uh, make an intelligence check. <laughs> He's like, you know, you're way outmatched here. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'm going to try to fight it. <laughs> but anyway. You must have had a number of bad DMs because I don't know who you're talking about specifically. <laughs> Yikes. A couple people came to mind. Mm. Yeah. I anyway, mean, that's, it's sort the of... sort of, that's the sort of thing where like in an instance like that where you're like wandering off the beaten path, well, then you should adjust that area if you're trying to make the game a free to explore kind of thing. You need to match everything to the player's level and slowly build it up. And if you yeah. kind of create a rule system that doesn't kind of like players don't necessarily like build up to like any kind of like in a D&D &D setting or a tabletop setting, your character's leveling up, you know. So you like you said that that level of that dungeon and the enemies in it were level 15 and you're level like 1 or 2. It's like that it, it's not kind of like what I'd imagine. Like right. I'd imagine it almost like in a video game where it's sure it scales or whatever yeah the scales are yeah and I could, but not, it's like right. level wise and i could see that re reasoning like the world is the way the world is if you happen to go somewhere where there's giant gargoyles <laughs> then you're gonna see them and they're probably gonna attack you yeah. but again it was a little bit like we were at the tavern. I don't think we had anything specific or we had like a night to kill. Uh, not a night, like an evening. <laughs> uh, and so I think I asked around for like something to do or anything interesting. And someone said something about these ruins. And I was like, all right, check it out. <laughs> so yeah, it kind I of mean, felt it... like I was being told I could go there and check it out. But I mean, know, that's a again, little bit of it. Well, you kind of have to, if you were, you'd have to do some like setup. It's not without setup. I kind of want to imagining so maybe sure explain that better on my end okay. <laughs> and it's way way easier in the tabletop thing where you're just imagining it <laughs> where you can imagine anything as opposed to a larp you sort of are limited by where people physically go and props and whatever yeah i think it's unlikely in a larp someone's going to say oh yeah these runes are nearby and they're not specifically telling you that because they want you to go there <laughs> Yeah. Unless some NPCs go way off book and just improving, which the PCs would take to be, oh, this is what's going on. Let's go <laughs> figure that out. Mm. That's what happens. Didn't you guys make up a town once? Uh, yeah, I made up a town. <laughs> <laughs> what was it, like Good Town? Or good Town. <laughs> Spoiler alert, Good Town does not really exist. <laughs> Quit looking for it. <laughs> yeah, anyway. I mean, that's... In a LARP setting, it's it's much different than tabletop. You're not yeah. like you're creating things for people to interact with, and if they can't, like you're gonna talk about whatever they can interact with, their choice to interact with it, and the tasks set out before them, you know, or tasks set out before them are kind of like predetermined. But sure, I think that goes back to saying about having a good staff, like if something like a tidbit was dropped about that and the players really wanted to go check it out, the staff should be able to adapt to that. It may throw off their table, but like, you know, if the players are there to play their game and if that's what they want to do, then I mean, I believe our staff would make it happen. <laughs> yeah. I think we've heard stories easy, that it has means, but yeah. they would pull it off. Yeah, not necessarily that event, but like the timeline of the events. About how like things weren't necessarily planned to happen or things were planned to happen that didn't based on player 
actions and choices and stuff. <clears throat> yeah. So. And I think like with the last event, we were going to attempt to allow players to take and fight the mods they wanted to in the way that they wanted to, like in the order that they wanted to, kind of measuring players like strategy to mm. kind of like fight back and take back a kingdom and a uh, landmass. But like with the rain and everything like that, it was like really hard to like set up and really yeah. sort of like, you know, it was, it was going to be near impossible to uh, kind of pull right. it off. So, <laughs> yeah. and to me that I wouldn't notice or didn't notice, like to me that didn't take away anything for the event. Um, but yeah, it does kind of stink to have to adjust or not go the way you want or how you had planned it, you know? Yeah. Cause I'm probably not a very good st- strategist. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have been like, where we got to go? Okay, let's go. Yeah. That's the thing. Like you hang with LARPing, you have like, what, from what I, from what I've seen, LARP, LARPing and LARPers and people in general, like everybody plays the game a little differently. And I think that the real key to a good LARP is being able to meet people in how they want to play the game and facilitate the means to allow them to play it the way they want to. That's like a skill that's like good to have. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> sure. <laughs> well, and that's I why think I like think fundamental to like fundamental thing to a good LARP. I don't know. And yeah, that was one of the reasons I think a small game would be easier to run because you have a handful of people that you can much easier to cater to rather than even a game with 20, 30 people. You know, if you have completely opposing play styles, that's hard to facilitate um, without kind of having to shift back and forth. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like every other mod or whatever will appeal rather than the whole kind of arc, which which is like, that's nice to have. Like, like I've never gone on a mod that I didn't at least like get something out of, you know, whether it be like a puzzle mod or a battle or whatever, or even the purely like role playing ones, it's just all in your taste, but I'm not a good measure. Cause as I was thinking before, like <laughs> I'm not hard to please, like I'm kind of just happy to be out there and playing. <laughs> so uh, I'll enjoy it almost no matter what, uh, as long as people are being cool. I've, I've been <clears throat> like, it, it's cool. I have this idea of like how I imagine like, a LARP to facilitate that. Um, and I've been working on an idea. Um, and basically, like you said, like it's easy to facilitate that idea with like a small group of people and kind of what I would imagine to like be able to pull that off is that you basically have people playing certain roles, like that they'd almost be storytellers in their own right because they decide like who and what the kingdom or group of like players and their faction or whatever you want to call it would end up doing and their actions kind of like uh, decide the course of play and then everybody else, I guess, which is where you would fall into would be like just <laughs> yeah. the, the faction like party member who'd be like, oh, sweet, we're going there. OK, that's what you decided. All right, let's go do this, you know, kind of thing. And they sure. kind of be deciding your story for you. For better or worse, um, so like a lead PC or something, or yeah, yeah. And what you were saying about if you have kind of two opposed or whatever factions, that does kind of um, that can either fight or interact. That does take a lot of pressure off of a staff to facilitate the kind of either opposition or the NPC role or whatever. You know, it's yeah. kind of a built-in, almost like a sports team. You know, like two teams show up and play the game like <laughs> yeah that's kind of that, that's I the mentioned. conflict I mean, I or that, the interest yeah i know that uh there's european larps that are like that i don't think that's like something that's i mean what i'm talking about isn't something that's necessarily new um oh, it's just sure. not something that's not been done in the united states <laughs> mm, uh, yeah that's been successful <laughs> cuz you do have like the sca and um cannot remember the name of the other one. We had a uh, Kenny on here, Kenneth on here. Oh yeah, what was that called? Start with an M. I I remember what you're talking about. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's like a little more realistic. Yeah, they have like factions and different stuff yeah. like that, and they meet like on their own time as well as like during the game's time. Right. Um, yeah, and like Dragoneer, like that kind of thing that we're talking about. Yeah, almost. Yeah. So there are there are like those things that exist. Right. And there's something for everybody, I guess. <laughs> right. Yeah. So yeah, one of the things kind of on my mind, or we sort of been discussing, is finding a LARP. Finding a game you can get to um, fits your style, um, because sort of distance is difficult for me these days um, to go to my regular game out in uh, eastern Pennsylvania. So it's kind of made me start looking around for something closer, um, but it's harder than maybe not harder than I imagined, but because <laughs> I kind of thought it would be hard to find something. Um, but it has led me to kind of open my perspective to try other things or, you know, at least give something a try, even if on the surface might not be exactly what I'm looking for. But, you know, because I'm probably looking for a game that's pretty similar to the game I was playing, you know, buffer, anywhere from light to medium touch, fantasy setting uh, with a little bit of tech or science is cool. Um but, you know, magic and that kind of stuff, just because that's what I like. Um, and while I would play, like, maybe post-apocalyptic style, at least try it out. Um, I don't know. It's just kind of limited to what's around and what you can find. Uh, and to trying, like, a completely different style, like, there is a Dragoneer chapter that's not far from us. Um, and I believe you can just show up to the practices and, and play or learn how to play or whatever. Um, so I think I'm going to probably check that out once the weather gets better. Or I don't know if they do it indoors or anything. But that's kind of on my list is at least an option <laughs> to stay active and you know keep, keep LARPing and trying different things. Meet new people, networking's good, at least for this project, you know. I think one thing that'll be weird is uh like not knowing anyone or a lot of people <laughs> um which was a little bit of how we got started at frontier dawn but we at least had like four or five of us <laughs> uh that could kind of be a party on our own <laughs> if we needed to yeah that's how uh Tuckner was born Tuckner? yeah oh yeah because i, I was didn't gonna have any beefy melee because... yeah yeah, I think I wanted to play a healer, but you had a character in mind already, which I was kind of surprised. Oh, that he was a healer. Yeah. Well, that was he just wanted to be a musician. I see. That happened to be a healing class. Right. But no, I, I liked it, playing that character. So yeah, uh, that was another thing, like that idea of trying a LARP on your own or with a group or small group of people. What do you guys think? Would you try a LARP by yourself? Solo LARP. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely would. I mean, it's hard to find LARPs around here where I live, and that it's not hard at the same time. It's just, like, hard to get into them, I guess, in my opinion. Like, hard to find the time. Oh, sure. Um, and then I feel like once, you know, like, if, if I go to a LARP, I feel like it's a commitment. Like, I don't just want to go once. So I'm kind of thinking about it that way, too. Like, if I go to a LARP, like, I'm going to want to go more than once if it's good. <laughs> sure. So I don't know. For me, it's like, uh, the co- it's a gig, it's, it gets kind of pricey. And, uh, I think that's what's, that's what stopped me from doing a couple of LARPs that I've kind of wanted to try just because I don't have costuming for it necessarily. Yeah. How about you, Evan? Did you ever go LARP without me? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I a, a new one all the time. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's not exactly the same, but going to Frontier Dawn by myself the first time was a little. Um, I wouldn't say like uh, it made me a little nervous because I knew these people, but these people, I knew everyone, but uh, <laughs> you know, I wasn't super close at the time, but. And normally our little group stuck together, so I didn't know exactly, you know, who I was going to be interacting with the whole time. And 
And I first got there, and I remember sitting down be- before the whole thing started. I was like, what am I doing here? <laughs> why, why did I come here by myself? <laughs> but like, as soon as we got started, I just started talking to whoever was sitting next to me. Had a great time. Right. So I don't know why that was even a worry about it. To go totally by yourself, as I am now, would be fine. Um, a year or two ago, I don't think I would have. But now that I've been LARPing cons- um, consistently for the past almost two years, well, year and a half, you know, I uh, am a lot quicker at you know role playing and coming up with something to be, even if it's not exactly what I want. But right. uh, to just jump in and be a part of what's going on isn't as hard as it was, you know. Uh, and I'm by myself all the time, so I mean that doesn't really bother me. <laughs> <laughs> the gamble, I think, is really just the people you'll be role playing with. Like, right? We really lucked out, and we clicked with everyone at Frontier Dawn right away. So, you know, that's just not always the case. We went back to our old game that we played over a decade ago, and they were all fine and you know nice enough people, but we didn't have that same like connection or spark or whatever yeah so we haven't been like really trying to go back so it's kind of like going to a new school yeah <laughs> yeah kind of That's good way to it. i don't know as a as a kid i went to a lot of a lot of different schools and uh always had to like meet new people so that doesn't bother me but yeah i could can see like if you don't kind of make a connection like yeah i'm not coming back I don't care how good your game is <laughs> <laughs> yeah which kind of stinks like and that's probably not necessarily true in all circumstances like if the game's good enough and i'm having a good time then then yeah but like one thing it's like you make a character and it's kind of hard to like, like i think the first character that i made the first time i larped was like very particular <laughs> i don't know how to say it so like it wasn't me personality wise. So it's like when somebody meet or met me outside of LARP, it was like, wait, who are you? And yeah, right. We talked about that before. Where like we went to a convention at with the LARP that we were going to. I think we'd only mm-hmm. been to like maybe one or two events, and um, yeah, people like didn't recognize us. Didn't even recognize my voice, I guess, and because uh, I like, talked in a different voice, but. That's one thing that's like, I don't know if that's like, not necessarily like intimidating, but something I think about, like, if I like act a certain way at the game and then like mm. afterwards, like people are like, oh, I guess it's dick. That's like, it's just a character. <laughs> yeah. I like I said, sure. it's just a character. I'm like, I don't know. I think about that. <laughs> I wouldn't worry about that personally. Why? Well, I- <laughs> I probably wouldn't play well, a deck. I, so. like, I don't care what people think. <laughs> Two, <laughs> like, if you go and it's a good time and you you know want to keep going, these people are going to learn who you really are. Yeah. You know, and if you go and it's a terrible time and they think you're a dick, then that's really no, <laughs> no loss there. <laughs> if you were role played so well, they don't know who you are. It was like you were never there. <laughs> <laughs> it just goes away easily. <laughs> I guess it's just something I think about like now that um, you know staff at a LARP and we do a podcast so it's like we're kind of like personalities at, at this point in a, in a little bit of a way so like sure. I guess I don't know mm-hmm. like oh I met that Joe guy like blah blah, blah. he does his own like 3 two, one lay on the podcast like oh yeah this character is a, is a dick <laughs> like this podcast. He must be a real dick in real life. I don't know. I'm not gonna listen. Uh, to that's true. I had no actually considered that. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, I had thought about that, and I probably would bring it up at some point about having a podcast. Uh, if I'm talking to people out of game, that's and then the it does kind of put you on the spot, like, oh, yeah, that's so the other. Now thing. you're getting a, you, you critiqued on everything. Game. Yeah, if you do go to a game and people recognize. Your name, or like who you are. Maybe. I ain't waiting for that, but <laughs> could happen, I suppose. Yeah. 
Well, it's like, well, Sorry, if we went to, you know, if we went to, I don't know, let's say uh, Dysphoric Mania, you know what I mean? Like we had them on the That's podcast, true, yeah. you know, so then it's like, oh, Joe from 321 is coming to play at our game. Because obviously you would talk to them about going to the game. Right. Um, I know, and that's like a game that I've wanted to go to for a while. Um, if I get the opportunity, I'd love to go. Um, yeah. And I guess that's like sort of like a weird boundary. Like, how do you approach that? Mm-hmm. I don't want special treatment. But I also know that, like, <laughs> I don't know. It might be weird. <laughs> I'm just going to, I'm going to have to fully like commit to like a full costume that like hides my identity <laughs> like, play that's an option and be behind the scenes kinda. take your mask off at the end <gasps> it's three two ones joe the whole time i can't believe it i killed that guy why did i do that <laughs> so i'll never be on his show now <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i think it's too hard about it <laughs> it's not like i think i'm anybody important or that we are it's just something that crossed my mind talking about. sure yeah <laughs> it's funny uh, one thing I was thinking that you're not going to want to hear <laughs> is that, uh, you know, you were worried about the cost of like making a costume because of the way you play. Like you don't put, you don't half ass anything. You put 110% into everything you make and create. So you're not going to say, well, I'll try this out. I'll put something quick together and a little bit of a character and then see how it is. Like you can't just do that. <laughs> You want to make a full character with, you know, perfectly crafted armor and impressive gear and everything. I mean, which is great. But if you did all that and went to a game that didn't appeal to you, you know, that would feel like a big waste. Yeah. yeah. But <laughs> if, you, <laughs> if you could put that aside somehow <laughs> and just put something basic together and, you know, some little character, <laughs> just put some yeah. face paint on. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> get, a, get a tunic or and a sword or blaster. Let like, go. Uh, this also goes in hand with like being three, two, one, or just being myself and not half-assing things. Like I get a reputation, man. <laughs> like <laughs> Joe doesn't half-ass. <laughs> True. Right. Unless he runs at a time because he's doing three things at the same time. I've seen your half-ass <laughs> thing. They're still awesome. So. <laughs> Like that map you well, had, I swear you had spent a week drawing. <laughs> 30 minutes doing it. It was 15, but... Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. What about like NPCing at a game for the first time? Or cast or whatever they call it? That seems Just... even weirder to me. But plus it like wouldn't really be like... A true going, experience or whatever. Yeah. To a LARP. I don't know. Is that weird to say? Like, I'm not trying to like downplay people playing our full time NPCing at all. Like, there's certainly people who do that and love it. I guess for myself, I'm thinking like I already full time NPC at a game. <laughs> like, I want to go and play a game. You know what I mean? Like, I want to uh, experience sure. something outside of uh, behind the scenes in a sense. You know, I want somebody to provide a story that I can play and enjoy. Um, and right. Not just be like. When we tried to get back into it, I was at college at some point. That's what we did. We went to a game that was similar to the one we used to play. And to start off, we just went to a couple events in NPC to see how their game you know, works and what the rules are and what the people are like playing. Yeah, I think it was a little cheaper to NPC. Oh, right. Uh, but you're right. We didn't get like the full experience. We never got to be like have our own character be a part of the world and experience it and affect the world or whatever, you know? Yeah. So we didn't get the full effect, you're right, but it at least gave us a little taste of the game. And it was sort of weird meeting people. I'm sure this is maybe just this game, but I'd try to meet people and they'd like introduce themselves as their character, even though they weren't playing their character. <laughs> I'm like, hey, I'm Ashton. What's your name? Draka Khan. <laughs> what? It's, oh, well, my real name's Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> and he ran away. I'm like, all right, good talking to you, Dracock. <laughs> but anyway. So you're going to go by yourself? Ashton? 
<laughs> oh, uh, I mean, I would hope you'd be available to come with me. <laughs> Can't but, take the leap. <laughs> yeah. No, I would. I Well, when you're talking about going now, I was thinking um, I'd worry that. I mean, I, I would probably try to push myself, but I'm pretty introverted uh, in nature. So I kind of would hate to just be sitting at is sitting in the end by myself. Nobody comes over and talks to me. Like, I think that's something like we try to do at our game is if we see somebody new, go over try to talk to them. You know, especially in game, um, it's kind of a nice icebreaker. Uh, but if that's not a priority to people playing, <laughs> then they might just let you sit there, or they're also shyness, awkwardness, whatever. Um, so there should be somebody tasked with that at every level. <laughs> The uh, welcome crew, just find the, gre- the greeters. Guy. You just find yeah. the biggest guy on the block and just fight them. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's jail. Sorry, kick his shit out. <laughs> Come on, bitch. Yeah, no, it's true. Yeah, I've been saying that for a while. That Port Army really needs a welcome crew. I don't. They don't need. It. We do it. <laughs> I wanted like an official like, hey, go to the docks, meet these people, make sure they get to town safely. <laughs> yeah. But I think if I'm going by myself, there would have to be something about the game that is really appealing. Um whether it be a super cool world they created, um, a cool rule system, class system that was fun for me. Like there was a game I was looking to go to I went back when I lived in New England and I had this idea of a character I wanted to make who was like focused on crafting or like a blacksmith or something. And they had a rule system that fit it really well because they had uh, a lot of stuff specifically for crafting and they even had like advanced classes or prestige classes for like crafting and stuff. And so I like really wanted to go, but like the one event I think I could have gone was the same as the Frontier Dawn event. (laughs) And then it was just hard to go after that. Um, (laughs) <laughs> yeah exactly so yeah if I found a really cool system uh, I'd probably at least stick it out and try to meet some people there I guess um, and plus you can meet people ahead of time like online like they have a good Facebook group or something that's actually what drew me I don't know about anyone else drew me to free Frontier Dawn as opposed to another LARP we are looking at because I thought the rule system was a lot better than this other one like they didn't have any classes or attributes or whatever that I found super interesting and Frontier Dawns was much more open, which I really like. So I was just glad we went to that even before we met anybody. Uh, yeah, I was thinking of a couple of games I may want to try someday in my life. Um, either it, when we had uh, Bart on talking about Bitcoin and they have another one. I think it's a little more fantasy oriented. They're somehow connected. Uh, the Voyage North. Yeah, I saw that. Um, that was probably on my list of things to maybe try someday. Um, cause it's again, be totally different. Um, like I'm used to a smaller campaign ish feel to it, you know, rather than the big epic battles, um, which if we have big battles they're you know, maybe 50, 60 people, but these battles are like hundreds or whatever. That doesn't really appeal to me. Yeah. It's like, it's just another night That's or whatever true. in a big sea of people that don't matter <laughs> or the other, there's a dozen people or two that are like really important and you're just tagging along I don't know sure I'm not I'm... saying you can't get anything out of that I'm just saying it doesn't appeal to me gotcha you want to be Aragorn or Gimli not old man they gave a sword to <laughs> they got shot in the first the guy, second the old man that shoots the first arrow yeah <laughs> he's important it's more of an appeal of trying it and seeing what it's like uh, more so than like that's definitely a LARP for me or whatever or making it like my home LARP. Gotcha. I just thought it'd be cool to check out a superhero LARP. I don't know how many are out there. And even more so, I don't know how many you know, run well. <laughs> because I don't know why, but superhero world opposed to fantasy world seems a lot more I don't know. It takes a lot more imagination, maybe. Especially, it's maybe mostly it's the flying, I guess. It'd be hard <laughs> to facilitate. I'm sure there's ways to do it and LARPs that do it. But right, there seems like there'd be you'd have to put a lot of limitations on it. 
because so many people could have super strength or invulnerability, you know, super speed. Like, how do you how do you work with that? You know, everyone else slows down. <laughs> well, no one probably has invulnerability because then. <laughs> Right, but I mean, maybe some level of like extra endurance or whatever. But I guess that's just like having extra armor, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. If you're listening to this and you know of one, we'll have you on the show. Well, you guys uh, tested that um, LARP at PAX, didn't you? Yeah, they had this 15 minute LARP going on. That was cool. And they had a variety of scenarios they ran, like 10 or 12 different ones, like fantasy. Uh, espionage, uh, post-apocalyptic, superhero, and that's one we got. We basically wanted anything besides high fantasy because <laughs> it was all frontier dog people doing it. And the one we got was superhero, and that was that was pretty cool. And they gave us next to no rules, really. They gave us like a little tiny role play intro that we could do, and then uh, we basically had to go through like a danger room and. They let us basically do whatever we want. So I made up this like fire elemental kind of guy. And when I attacked, I said something like flame strike. <laughs> something like that. That's cool. And then uh, anyone could heal, basically. They had to like spend so much time uh, doing like first aid. And then I decided mine would be like cauterizing or something like that. Mm-hmm. But it was cool just to do it real quick and do a different setting and yeah, I like superheroes, so I think that would be a really cool setting to play sometime. I wonder how unique the characters would be. Like, it's hard to not make Superman, Batman, or whatever, you know? Right, but, I mean, even in a fantasy game, like, some people model their characters off of... There's fans. no character like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, if you make a rule system that's open enough, you know... They can be similar because there's probably a superhero. I mean, Squirrel Girl exists, so <laughs> there's a superhero for everything out there. Right. So, nah, there would be. I just would be curious. Mm. Like, how many people would just want to be Superman? I got you. Sure, saying. yeah. Or they'd only be a step or two from that, uh, you know. You're superhero. Superman, but you use guns. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Well, if you have anything you'd like to contribute, visit our Facebook page. Let us know about uh, your awesome LARP or the kind of LARP you'd want to play. Uh, Or how you find a LARP would be awesome things for our group and our community to know. But we thank you for listening. This has been 321 Lay On Podcast, Next Level Nerds LARP Podcast. Visit nextlevelnerd.com. Connect with us there and check out all of our other podcasts like the Next Level Nerd Movie Podcast where Justin and Mitch defend movies that they like that most people don't. Uh, and Sugar Frosted Cereal, which is doing a bunch of fun stuff right now. Um, covering Daredevil and we're trying some other things where we're doing recommendations and little side shows like that, which is fun. And the Nerd Herd Gaming Podcast. A variety of hosts get together to talk about all kind of gaming. Video games, board games, bar trivia games, <laughs> and the like. You can find all of our shows. Just search Next Level Nerd on Google or your favorite podcasting app. Thanks for listening. Until next time, LARP enthusiasts. Remember to spread the word, spread the nerd. And it was close enough or familiar enough to kind of know where you're going as far as creating a character. If you want to be an orc warrior or dwarf mage or whatever, you know, you could probably think of something to fit into the rules. It's a wonderful system. It's perfect. <laughs> Flawless. Okay. Especially <laughs> the ritualism and crafting systems. <laughs> Speaking of sponsors, go to our Patreon page. That's <laughs> winner.com. And visit LARPbox.com. Is that not organic enough? That would have been a decent segue.